Hey everyone, today we're going to be reading September 22nd. This is um, four chapters of Isaiah 15 through 19, then followed by 1 Thessalonians 2 17 through 3 13. Sorry, I got so many papers on my desk. Psalm 77 and Proverbs 24, verse 7. I sat down to start this reading last night and it was already about 10.30 and I realized it was 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, five chapters in Isaiah and I ended the video after realizing that and <laughs> kicked it to today. So once again, falling a day behind where uh, at least the, the pace we were on. Needless to say, let's get in to this and um, enjoy this reading. Isaiah 15 to 19. An oracle concerning Moab. Because Ar of Moab is laid waste in a night, Moab is undone. Because Kir of Moab is laid waste in a night, Moab is undone. He has gone up to the temple and to Dibon, to the high places to weep over Nebo and over Mediba. Moab wails. On every head is baldness, every beard is shorn. In the streets they wear sackcloth, on the housetops and in the squares everyone wails and melts in tears. Heshbon and Elilah cry out. Their voice is heard as far as Jahaz. Therefore the armed men of Moab cry aloud. His soul trembles. My heart cries out for Moab. Her fugitives flee to Zor. To Eglath Shelishiah. For at the ascent of Luhith, they go up weeping. On the road to Horonaim, they raise a city of destruction. The waters of Nimrim are a desolation. The grass is withered, the vegetation fails, the greenery is no more. Therefore the abundance they have gained and what they have laid up they carry away over the brook of the willows. For a cry has gone around the land of Moab. Her wailing reaches Iglaim. Her wailing reaches Bir Elim, Elim, for the waters of Dibon are full of blood, and for I will bring upon Dibon even more a lion for those of Moab who escape for the remnant of the land. Send the lamb to the ruler of the land from Shelah by way of the desert, to the mount of the daughter of Zion, like fleeing birds, like a scattered nest, so are the daughters of Moab at the fords of, of the Arnon. Give counsel, grant justice, make your shade like a night. Sorry, make your shade like night at the height of noon. Shelter the outcasts. Do not reveal the fugitive. Let the outcasts of Moab sojourn among you. Be a shelter to them for, from the destroyer. When the oppressor is no more and destruction has ceased, and he who tramples underfoot has vanished from the land, then a throne will be established in steadfast love, and on it will sit in faithfulness in the tent of David, one who judges and seeks justice and is swift to do righteousness. We have heard the pride of Moab, how proud he is, of his arrogance, his pride, and his insolence, in his idle boasting, he is not right. Therefore let Moab wail for Moab, let everyone wail, mourn, utterly stricken, for the raisin cakes of Kir Haraseth. For the, fir for the fields of Heshbon languish, and the vine of Sibma, the lord of the nations, have the lords of the nations have struck down its branches, which reached to Jazer and strayed to the desert. Its shoots spread abroad and passed over the sea. Therefore I weep with the weeping of Jazer. For the vine of Sibma, I drench you with my tears, O Heshbon and Eliela. For over your summer fruit and your harvest, the shout has ceased. The joy, has, the joy and gladness are taken away from the fruitful field, and in the vineyards no songs are sung, no cheers are raised, no treader treads out wine in the presses. I have put an end to the shouting, therefore my inner parts moan like the, a lyre for Moab, and my inmost self for Kir Haraseth. And when Moab presents himself, when he wearies himself on the high place, when he comes to his sanctuary to pray, he will not prevail. This is what the Lord, this is the word that the Lord spoke concerning Moab in the past. But now the Lord has spoken, saying, In three years, like the years of a hired worker, the glory of Moab will be brought into contempt, in spite of all his great multitude. And those who remain will be very few and feeble. 
and uh, chapter 17, an oracle concerning Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease to be a city and will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroer are deserted. They will be four flocks, which will lie down and none will make them afraid. The fortress will disappear from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. And the remnant of Syria will be like the glory of the children of Israel, declares the Lord of hosts. And in that day, the glory of Jacob will be brought low, and the fat of his flesh will grow lean, and it shall be as when the reaper gathers standing grain, and his arms harvest the ears. And as one who gleans the ears of grain in the valley of Rephim, gleanings will be left in it, as when an olive tree is beaten, two or three berries in the top of the highest bough, four or five on the branches of a fruit tree, declares the Lord God of Israel. In that day, man will look to his maker, and his eyes will look on the Holy One of Israel. He will not look to the altars, the work of his hands, and he will not look on what his own fingers have made, either the ashram or the altars of incense. In that day, their strong cities will be like the deserted places of the wooded heights and the hilltops, which they deserted because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation, and have not remembered the rock of your refuge. Therefore, though you plant pleasant plants, and sow a vine branch of a stranger, though you make them grow on the day that you plant them, and make them blossom in the morning that you sow, yet the harvest will flee away in a day of grief and incurable pain. Ah, the thunder of many peoples, they thunder like the thundering of the sea. Ah, the roar of, the, of, of nations, they roar like the roaring of mighty waters. The nations roar like the roaring of many waters, but he will rebuke them, and they will flee far away, chased like chaff on the mountains before the wind, and whirling dust before the storm. At evening time, behold, terror. Before morning, they are no more. This is the portion of those who loot us, and the lot of those who plunder us. Chapter 18. Ah, land of whirring wings! That is beyond the rivers of Cush, which sends ambassadors by the sea in vessels of papyrus on the waters. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. All you inhabitants of the world, you who dwell on the earth, when a signal is raised on the mountains, look. When a trumpet is blown, hear. For thus the Lord said to me, I will quietly look from my dwelling like a like clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is over and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he cuts off the shoots with pruning hooks, and the spreading branches he lops off and clears away. They shall all of them be left to the birds of the prey, to the birds of prey of the mountains, and to the beasts of the earth. To the birds of the prey... Sorry, cannot read that. This is 18, um, verse 6. They shall all of them be left to the birds of prey of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth. And the birds of prey will summer on them, and all the beasts of the earth will winter on them. At that time, tribute will be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts. 19. An oracle concerning Egypt. Behold, the Lord is riding on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt, and the idols of Egypt will tremble at his presence, and the heart of the Egyptians will melt within them, and I will stir up Egyptians against Egyptians, and they will fight each against one another, each against another, and each against his neighbor city against city, kingdom against kingdom, and the spirit of the Egyptians within them will be emptied out, and I will, be confound, and I will confound their counsel. And they will inquire of the idols and the sorcerers and the medians and the necromancers, and I will give over the Egyptians into the hand of a hard master, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Lord God of hosts. And the waters of the sea will be dried up, and the river will be dry and parched, and its canals will become foul, and the branches of Egypt's Nile will diminish and dry up. Reeds and rushes will rot away. There will be bare 
There will be bare places by the Nile, on the brink of the Nile, and all that is sown by the Nile will be parched, will be driven away, and will be no more. The fishermen will mourn and lament all who cast a hook in the Nile, and they will languish who spread nets on the water. The workers, the workers in combed flax will be in despair, and the weavers of white cotton. Those who are pillars, the pillars of the land will be crushed, and all who work for pay will be grieved. The princes of Zoan are utterly foolish. The wisest counselors of Pharaoh will give, the wisest counselors of Pharaoh give stupid counsel. How can you say to Pharaoh, I am a son of the wise, a son of ancient kings? When you, where then are your wise men? Let them tell you that they might know what the Lord of hosts has purposed against Egypt. The princes of Zoan have become fools, and the princes of Memphis are deluded. Those who are the cornerstones of her tribes have made Egypt stagger. The Lord has mingled within her a spirit of confusion, and they will make Egypt stagger in all its deeds, as a drunken man staggers in his vomit. And there will be nothing for Egypt that head or tail, palm branch or reed may do. In that day, the Egyptians will be like women and tremble with fear before the hand that the Lord of hosts shakes over them. And the land of Judah will become a terror to the Egyptians. Everyone to whom it is mentioned will fear because of the purpose that the Lord of hosts has purposed against them. In that day, there will be five cities in the land of Egypt that speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to the Lord of hosts. One of these will be called the city of destruction. In that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord at its border. It will be a sign and a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. When they cry, when they cry to the Lord because of, because of oppressors, he will send them a savior and defender and deliver them. And the Lord will make himself known to the Egyptians, and the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day and worship with sacrifice and offering. And they will make vows to the Lord and perform them. And the Lord will strike Egypt, striking and healing. And they will return to the Lord, and he will listen to their pleas for mercy and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and Assyria will come into Egypt and Egypt into Assyria, and the Egyptians will worship with the Assyrians. In that day, Israel will be the third with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the earth, whom the Lord of hosts has blessed, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. All right. First Thessalonians 2, 17 through 3, 13. But since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, in person, not in heart, we endeavored, the more eager, we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face, because we wanted to come to you, I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer... We were willing to be left behind at Athens alone, and we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to establish and exhort you in, their, in your faith, that no one be moved by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction, just as it has come to pass, and just as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, for fear that somehow the, temper had tempted, the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would be in vain. But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and has brought us the good news of your faith and love, and reported that you always remember us kindly, and long to see us, as we long to see you, for this reason, brothers, in all our distress and affliction, we have been, com we have been comforted about you through your faith. For now we live, if you are standing fast in the Lord. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you? For all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God, as we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may God and our Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. 
And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before God, our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Hmm. Psalm 77. To the choir master, according to Jeduthun, a psalm of Asaph. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. With your arm redeemed, you with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Hmm. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The sky, oh, sorry, the clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. All right, Proverbs 24, verse 7 says, Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the gate he does not open his mouth. All right, tomorrow, our reading for September 23rd, we'll read Isaiah 20, 21, and 22, 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 12, Psalm 78, 1 through 39, and Proverbs 24, 8. All right, thanks for reading with me tonight. I'll see you back here tomorrow.